All right. Hey, VC. My name is Jamie, and we are back once again. Uh, hopefully things are good uh, where you are. Uh, here, uh, we have been socked with snow. We've gotten quite a fair bit of snow over the past 24 hours, and I might be having a bad hair day because I've had to get my toque out, and of course, the brushing of the snow, and the shoveling of the snow, and it's pretty cold out, too, uh, for mid-November. But, uh, well, here we are. We'll Stay inside where it's nice and warm and enjoy some great music. And we've got another unboxing, or maybe an unwrapping, uh, more appropriate than this one. Uh, this is another uh, 50th anniversary collection, uh, an album that came out in 1968, a debut disc this time, and it's Jethro Tall, This Was. And this is their 50th anniversary edition. And this continues in the series of Jethro Tull releases in sort of the uh, CD book uh, format, which is very nice value for your money. And uh, we have the original 1968 album, remixed to stereo and 4.1 surround by Stephen Wilson. Includes unreleased recordings and alternate versions. And it's interesting, if it's going to be remixed, if it's, say, like a classic rock or a prog rock album, uh, chances are very good if they're remixing it and releasing it. It was done by Stephen Wilson. He seems to be on just about everything right now in terms of remixing and whatnot. And uh, and sure enough, here he is again, uh, Stephen Wilson. So this is Jethro Tall, debut disc uh, this was. And, of course, uh, featuring Ian Anderson, longtime member of the band, and also Mick Abrams, who's quite a uh, uh, focal point for this one. Mick Abrams left after this album was released. And this album has quite a different sound to maybe the Jethro Tall that you're used to if you haven't heard this album before. This is a lot more uh, R&B, blues, even a little bit jazz-based, which is kind of the direction Mick Abrams wanted to take the band. However, then Ian Anderson wanted to then, of course, take them into a much more uh, folk rock uh, vein, which is where they went after this album. But uh, So Mick Abrams, I believe, left, left because of uh, musical uh, differences, and uh, but Mick Abrams is definitely all over this album. Uh, Mick Abrams was then replaced by great guitarist Martin Barr, who was then along long-time member of uh, Jethro Tull. But, uh, yeah, so this is, it's a different sounding uh, Jethro Tull than, say, Aqualung or everything that came after that. Okay, and this is a three CD and one DVD set. And we'll just take a look at what's on the back. It says, in the 96-page book, and I must say, like, certainly for these these editions, the books are definitely very extensive. Probably the most extensive I've seen in terms of reissues. Just so much detail, so much uh, analysis. And uh, this one will likely be no exception. Uh, an extensive note by Martin Webb. Not notes, but note by Martin Webb, on the formation of the band and the recording of their first album, a track-by-track -track annotation of the album and associated recordings by Ian Anderson, lyrics for the album and bonus tracks. Stephen Wilson explains his approach on the mixing of the album to stereo and 4.1. Uh, interview with John Wood and veteran uh, producer Sandy Roberts Robertson about sound techniques, uh, engineer Vic Gam and Tull's debut album, a recording and touring chronology, an interview with Billy Ritchie of Chrysalis Stablemates Clouds on their early association with Jethro Tull, and articles on the differing stereo mixes and the variations in LP packaging around the world. Okay, and there you have the... Uh, Listings on the back, so the CD1 is a Stephen Wilson stereo remix, so there you get the full album. And then it's associated recordings uh, for a couple of tracks, including A Christmas Song. And then you have some previously unreleased tracks. And then CD2 is further associated recordings, so we're looking at a lot of BBC sessions. And again, this was their debut disc just out, and then on the BBC on July 1968. Amazing. Uh, original mixes and radio adverts. So you've got some original mixes of various songs, and then you've also got a few uh, radio ads. So I look forward to listening to that. Those are right there. US FM radio spot number one and US FM radio spot number two. So look forward to that. And then CD3 is the original 1968 UK stereo mix. And this is a disc transfer. So you have it in stereo and in mono as well, which is nice to see. And then the DVD audio includes the original album remixed by Stephen Wilson. Also a Christmas song uh, remixed as well. And it does look like it has some of the bonus tracks as well. Okay. And without further ado... Let's uh, take a look inside. No hype sticker or anything like that. Uh, I don't think they've had hype stickers uh, with regards to this uh, series. Again, this is following uh, exactly the style 
of these sort of book CD uh, reissues of uh, many of their albums. They've been doing this roughly since about uh, 2014. Okay, so we've got the uh, shrink off, and we'll take a look inside. And there you have the discs all placed in like that. Uh, my only quibble, again, with this series, I, you know, the the, the liner notes are extensive, the CDs are great, lots of information. I just don't like when they overlap uh, CDs like that. Like if I want to hear the stereo version, I've got to kind of slightly slip it out there and kind of fumble with the CDs. I mean, if they could just extend it just that little bit so you could have just the CDs sitting uh, individually in their trays. And I just don't like when they're overlapped like that, but that's, maybe that's just me, I don't know, but having said that, let's take a look inside, and as I mentioned, the, the books for these are absolutely extensive. Lots of reproductions of the singles, the posters, plenty of extensive interviews, uh, certainly with regards to Ian Anderson and, uh, other members of the band often, I was analyzing the band, but they'll get into, you know, certainly the recording, productions, just everything. It's great to have posters. And this one, it's, oh, okay, it seems to have some of the, yeah, the, uh, I do love when they print these things. You can see, oh, this person was with this man, and then this person was over here, and that's how these bands got together with these members. These are always lots of fun to, to look at. Oh, okay. I always thought this was a rather unusual cover <laughs> for a debut disc. Uh, but uh, there you have it. You know, them sort of looking like old men surrounded by these dogs. Um, but hey, this was Jethro Tull. So this is just out, and uh, yeah, certainly look forward to to listening and getting into that. Now I can show you a few more from the series. Uh, before I do uh, do that, I do have this uh, available. Um, I, I picked it up on CD a few years back. This is a 2008 uh, release, which is fairly similar to this. Uh, this will be a lot more extensive, but that's the collector's edition of their debut disc. And then you can see maybe some of the tracks there. A lot of it with the BBC sessions and what have you. But uh, certainly this was very nice presentation overall. But yeah, this definitely has a lot more of the blues R&B sound going on, uh, again with the influence of McAbrams, who then left uh, after, after, after the first album. Okay, and uh, continuing with the uh, series, or at least this style, they've been reissuing uh, quite extensively a lot of uh, classic Jethro Tull uh, albums. Uh, not necessarily in order, uh, that sort of thing, and certainly for this one, I guess they wanted to capitalize on the 50th anniversary of the release. Uh, their last one, I believe, in the series uh, was Jethro Tull's Heavy Horses. Again, really continuing uh, Ian Anderson's great uh, folk rock uh, influence. So there you have Heavy Horses, uh, Songs in the Wood, and really getting into the folky acoustic style. Again, all great books, lots of information on, on these. Some of these are three CDs and a DVD, well, you know, just depends on the, on the compilation. Uh, Jethro Tull's Stand Up, and I believe this was the second album. This is the album that came after uh, Jethro Tull This Was, and this uh, recreates nicely the pop-up that's inside. There you go. And this is, of course, with the new guitarist, uh, Martin Barr. Very nice. All right. And then, of course, the classic uh, Jethro Tull Aqualung. And again, you know, lots of information on this one. This uh, is uh, two disc and one DVD. And certainly, as I've talked about, I do have this on vinyl, but uh, this is really a favorite of mine in terms of the Jethro Tull catalog. I do like a lot, most of their albums, but uh, Jethro Tull, Minstrel in the Gallery. I think it's just a great album. And this is a, a two CD and DVD set. Again, same style. And again, the way they house the CDs on top of each other. It's just what they've done for the series, but uh, I, don't, I don't really care for that. Some people don't have a problem with it. I just I don't like it. Uh, Jethro Tall, uh, Too Old to Rock and Roll, Too Young to Die. Kind of a different album for Jethro Tall. It came out kind of feeling uh, the influence of uh, punk and uh, whatnot, or certainly changing musical styles uh, in the uh, mid-70s. And again, continuing uh, with the... Uh, how many discs we got? Uh, at least two discs. Uh, two discs and two DVDs on this one. And then we've also got uh, Ian Anderson's War Child. Nice, great album. 
And every time I look at this, I always kind of laugh. Um, so we're going back to now uh, 2014 for the release, but I don't know if you'll be able to see that it says copyright uh, 2104. <laughs> instead of 2014. And that also happened for Jethro Tull's reissue of A Passion Play. And they have, uh, what is it on the bottom? Yes, I think somewhere in yeah, down here it says, yeah, copyright 2104. So still yet to be released. All right, and that's going to wrap it up uh, for this edition. Thank you so much uh, for dropping by, and I hope you do have yourself a, a great weekend. And, uh, yeah, definitely going to be enjoying uh, a little Jethro Tall. Uh, this was uh, for this weekend. Again, have a good one. Uh, thank you again so much for the comments, and if you can hit subscribe, that would be great, and don't forget to hit that notification thing too. Take care. Bye-bye.